Thank you. So I was born an identical twin, which means I was singular for the duration of one entire cell. And I was wondering that that one cell, just before it split into two, was that me or was that my brother? And why did it divide anyway? I mean, why does one life become two? Well, whatever the reason, here's me and Mike. Now check this out, to this day I still have no idea who I am in that photo. <laughs> which is really crazy, and, and, and my folks probably do know, they're in the front row, mom, dad, who, which one am I? Re I, was, <laughs> I swear I was gonna say they're right, I, but okay. I'll have to trust you on that one. Um, in any case, I'll need your help with these ones later, too. But uh, here's the thing I really want to share with the rest of you. It cannot be overstated the impact that being an identical twin has on your development as a person. Because the truth is, even though my childhood was really happy, it was also marked with this impenetrable sense that I was one half of a whole. And I'm not sure this halfness, this feeling of halfness, I'm not sure how sustainable that is for a human. I mean... I believe that at our very core, from that very first cell, we really are hardwired to seek our individuality, our natural oneness. You know, some of us might bury that impulse, for others it might come more naturally. For me, I dove into creativity really early on. See, I know who I am in this photo. I'm the guy on the left. I'm psyched to be scribbling as many colors onto that page as possible, and Mike's like, this sucks, let's go play t-ball. You can see it in his face. So me, art, Mike, sports, done. And no more same outfits. And this worked pretty well until hormones entered the picture. Now, set aside the fact that Andrea was basically our cousin. I mean, she was our aunt's best friend's daughter, and we called her our cousin. But regardless, we were both enamored with her. So what is a twin to do? I mean, how do we get Andrea, or any girl for that matter, to notice you? I figured I had to dial up my efforts a little bit, so I uh, started taking uh, classes at the Children's Theater of Charlotte. I became the class clown in school. Cutting up and making people laugh sort of became my thing, the apparent answer to my quest for individuality. My announcement to the world that this is me. I even won major awards for my efforts. I mean, you can see here that I was named the wittiest student in the school. I mean, that's huge. Not to mention a beacon of hope. So there you have it. I'm creative. I'm witty. This is me. Ladies, world, I have arrived. The problem is, Andrea was still out of my league, right? I mean, come on, look at me. Scrawny frame, ridiculous sunglasses. And what exactly am I going to say to her on this beach moment here? I mean, hey, Andrea, why don't you come back and see me in a production of Bye Bye Birdie tonight? I'm not really sure. So I know I needed something else. I needed to, to dial things up a little more. So I thought, you know what, I'll become a musician. I heard the girls love this. Now, based on the tucks and the tails and the bow tie, I'm not sure I had really gotten it at this point yet. But we're, we're teasing something out here, some sort of a theme about individuality and creativity, right? So just you know, hang with me here. How do they work together? Inevitably, I did find my way to the rock world. Got a mohawk, pierced my nipples, shaved my head. And in a band, I did find familiar comfort in sort of a transitional family. It was one part of a unit again, and it was uh, safe. And then there was Sarah. Now, for years, my instinct in relationships was always to fuse together into one. But when you meet someone who sees you and accepts you for who you are, that's where two individuals really can flourish in a relationship. And unbeknownst to us, right behind our hands in this wedding photo of ours, a brand new individual life was already underway. Two beings had collided into one, an expression of creativity at its most basic, its most cosmic, its most mind-blowing. And it wasn't just mind-blowing because we found out the day after our honeymoon. No, it's mind-blowing because... I now had a front row seat to witness the full, uninhibited emergence of an individual, the sweet little girl, Mirabelle, who's in the front row right now. Her, her body, her voice, her personality, her curiosity, and her creativity. You know, of particular impact to me is the role that creativity plays in the unveiling individuality. I mean, it allows for a peek inside of her developing brain. 
I've been sort of tracking it. You see, it starts out abstract. Here, as you can see, we have a bus. It says it right there in the corner, a bus. And then complexities and patterns start to materialize. Abstract expressions become a bit more organized. Cells divide and spread. It's almost as if there are messages being sent here, saying, this is me. I am here. I have something unique to show you. A few months later, maybe you start to see a little more confidence showing up on the page. Stronger choices, bolder techniques. It's becoming a little more unpredictable. There's some swagger in the strokes. And then eventually something big and beautiful, colorful and distinctive shows up. Something unapologetic. Something irreplaceable. The singular uniqueness of one's humanity expressed in creativity. It's as in the Enzo, but a simple hand-drawn circle in Zen Buddhism, symbolizing enlightenment, strength, elegance, the universe, symbolizing oneness, symbolizing wholeness. The Hubble telescope captured this stunning image of, of colliding galaxies, two of them. Collisions trigger bursts of star formations and new galaxies. From two emerges one. Many ones. Everyone is creative. And I celebrate your wholeness. Thank you. <laughs>